Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. E.G. Marshall. There's a haunting, lovely song in Shakespeare's Twelfth Night which has troubled my dreams and perhaps yours. Come away, come away, death. Let me in sad cypress be laid. If it hasn't haunted you yet, perhaps it might after the story I bring you now. A story which, not unsurprisingly, has to do with death. What are you doing here? What do you want? I've come for you, Mr. Brokaw. It's time. What do you mean, come for me? It's time. Who are you? The name of Morris is good enough for day-to-day use and creates no difficulties. It is borrowed from the Latin. Mors. My name is Death, Mr. Brokaw, and I have an appointment with you. Mystery drama, Come Away, Death, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars William Griffiths and Norman Rose. It is sponsored in part by X-Lax and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. You've all heard of the old Brokar Mansion, naturally. Facing the river, occupying a full block in the heart of the city, with its gardens stretching all the way to the river, and its towering shade trees shielding the imposing bulk of the Renaissance house with its great copper roof. It's gone now, of course, to be replaced by a huge high rise apartment building. But it isn't so long ago that the last of the Brokars, Simon, lived and refused to die there, no matter how many people, in and out of the real estate business, were eagerly awaiting his demise. Oh, good evening, Mr. Rensselaer. Good evening, Mrs. Marbles. How is Mr. Brokaw? Why, he seems to be better, sir. Is the doctor still with him? No. Dr. Manning left just a few minutes ago. Uh, They're not putting him in the hospital again? Oh, Dr. Manning said not. I... I... Yes, yes, yes. What is it, Mrs. Marples? Forgive me, Mr. Rensselaer. Just the doctor, and now you here. I've been with Mr. Brokaw as housekeeper for over 35 years. And I don't know... Anyone else who could have taken it, Mrs. Marples. Oh, he's a difficult man. Like all strong men. Oh, that's what's so awful, I suppose. He's still a big, lusty, healthy man. That he should be cut down in his prime like this. Dr. Manning thinks it's that uh, imminent? Well, you'll have to ask Mr. Brokaw about that. Or the doctor himself. Well, Well, since I've been called in, I... I can guess perhaps it is. I'd better get on up, or is he resting? Uh, no, no, he wanted you shown up right away. I uh, better not keep him waiting. Uh, Mr. Rensselaer? Yes? Uh, do, do you... Will, will he be changing his will? Is, is that what it is? Now, I don't think you have anything to worry about, Mrs. Marple. Oh, it wasn't myself I was concerned about. It, it was Miss Nita... Oh, yes. Well, you understand there's nothing I can say one way or another. Oh, that sweet little niece of his has given up her private life to move in here and help nurse Mr. Brokaw ever since that first attack of... Well, ever since they discovered that he was ill. And I'd hate to see her left out in the cold if anything happens. I don't want to see her lose out to that cold, greedy little trollop who, in my opinion, is more than anything else responsible for the state he is in now. Oh, can't you do something? Mrs. Marples, I am a lawyer. 
I appreciate and applaud your concern, but uh, that's as far as I can go. Is uh, Nita here now? Yes. Uh, she's in the library with her fiance, Dr. Lawrence. Uh, very well. Perhaps I'll have a chance to talk to her for a moment when I come down. Now I'd better get upstairs. <laughs> What are you doing at that half-open door? Shh, Nita, hold it a minute. Will you stop acting like a private eye? I am a private eye. Watching the legal beagle ascend to Mount Olympus and listening at the same time for the below stairs gossip. Oh, come away from that door. What do you care, anyway? <laughs> but I do care, lover. Mr. Brokaw looms very large in my life since he's all that stands between me and the love of my life. Oh, that isn't fair. Uncle Simon isn't keeping us apart. Oh, isn't he? Then how come we're not married and you won't let me take you away from all this? But you know how ill Uncle Simon is. He needs me. I I'm the only family he has. Uh, 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 correction, lovebug. He has Mrs. Marples to take care of him. Oh, no, she... she's not a relative. So, all right. He has that snaky secretary, that voluptuous Venus, Miss Bunny Huggins, to provide that. Well, I'm not going to let that... She's angling to marry him. Now she knows he's dying. So? Well, I just don't want to see him taken. Have you ever thought maybe he deserves it? Well, he spent his life doing that to everyone else that crosses his path. How about maybe he ought to get his comeuppance for a change? Perry, he was my mom's brother. When she died, I swear she worried more about him than anything or anyone else. I mean, it was crazy. She was ten years younger, but she always treated him like her baby brother. That barracuda? <laughs> Mom said all that hard stuff was just a front. Come on, Nita. As far as her brother Simon was concerned, your mother was blind as a bat. Maybe, but but I've still got to hang in, do what I can. Nita. What? It, uh, it isn't the dough, is it? I mean, look, I'm not going to be an intern forever. No, it isn't the dough. It's just, well, I don't want to see someone who's... Well, sort of my own, get taken. And as long as there's any way of shutting out Miss Bunny Huggins, I feel I owe at least that much to my mom. Well, how about me? Oh, darling. Can't you wait just this little bit longer? You're sure of Dr. Manning's diagnosis? I am a registered nurse. That's why I came here. I mean, there's no chance of remission. It is terminal. No chance. It's terminal. <laughs> Damn it, Rensselaer, I won't accept it. A little pain, all right, but die? Oh, not me. Not Simon Brokar. I have too much left to do. I'm not about to die, no matter what the doctor says. And uh, what am I here for? To change my will. Why does it have to be changed in the prime of health? Because I've made up my mind. I'm going to take the final step at last. At 55, I'm going to be married. Well, congratulations, I suppose. Do I know the uh, intended bride? Well, of course you do. Who else would I... Oh, want me to get that? No, no, I'll get it myself. Hello. Simon? Oh, Bonnie. <laughs> Who else? No one. Oh, I knew that deep, tickly, sexy voice the moment it answered. <laughs> oh, am I interrupting anything? Oh, no, no, no. Well, uh... Just a conference with my lawyer. Oh. Oh, do you have him there, darling? Why? Well, it seemed about time. Honey, you haven't been feeling sick again, have you? Oh, no, it's nothing for you to worry about. Oh, but of course it is. You know how I worry all the time. Now, oh, Bunny, when, when I get through with my lawyer, you won't ever have to worry again. Oh, but I do, darling. I don't want anything to happen to my baby. A girl has to be practical. Just a reasonable settlement. Yeah, well, let me suggest it. Joint property when we're married and sole heir of anything happens to me. M married? Bunny, is, is that enough? I... I need you so much. Oh, you draw those papers up, darling. And at last will be what we have always should have been together. If you need me, call me. If not... Let's have a lovely drink together when we sign the wedding agreement. Oh, I love you. Yeah, I love you. Bye now. Bunny, I... Oh, 
Bye. <clears throat> All right, Rensselaer. Let's get down to business. I want to redraw my will. Well, before we do that, can we talk just a moment? Oh, lawyers. All right, what about what is your hurry to rush into this marriage? Well, I don't know how long I'll be around to enjoy it. Simon, I can't. There isn't any discussion, you see. Now or never. And I choose now. All right, this is for the present, Simon. But do you have to mortgage yourself for the future, too? You're a man of my age. Wouldn't you be tempted to mortgage your future, too, for a girl like this? Or someone like her? That no man could ever sensibly dream of having unless... Unless... She was bought and paid for. Well, we'll pretend that that was never said. Just let me go in my own way and the devil take the hindmost. Yes? Who, who is it? Mr. Morris. For Mr. Brokaw. Oh, is he expecting you? He very well should be. Well, we have strict orders. I'm not... Sure, I can let you in. It doesn't matter, because you really can't keep me out. What did you say your name was? Uh, Morris. Uh, the name is a convenience. What does that mean? It's not exact, and it is borrowed. You're an imposter. Oh, no. That's the last thing I am. What are you doing here? What do you want? I've come for you, Mr. Bokar. It's time. What do you mean you come for me? It's time. The name of Morris is good enough for day-to-day -day use and creates no difficulties. As I said, it's borrowed from the Latin, Mors, which in turn means death. My name is Death, Mr. Brokaw. And as I said, I have an appointment with you. No. No, no, I'm not ready to die yet. Ah, uh, but then, who is? Well, this can't be happening. I'll have you thrown out. I am the one unwelcome visitor no one can refuse. Now, I beg you not to excite yourself... For this encounter, time is standing still. And you are frozen at the brink between life and afterlife. Get out of here. Oh, really? You cannot threaten me. I'm, I'm not going ready to die. I... Well, the choice isn't yours. No, but, but I'm not ready. As I said, whoever is... You don't understand. I'm rich. I have my health. Never mind what that stupid doctor says. I've never been married, but I've just found the woman I wanted who excites me, thrills me. I don't mean to interrupt. <laughs> that's, that's rather a silly thing to say, isn't it? What? I mean, that's really basically what I do. I make a career of interrupting. You come right down to it. Do you have to be so casual about the whole thing? Oh, I don't mean to be. You see, it's all become such a ritual. It's hard not to be bored. The same thing over and over again. Well, I'm glad it bores you that much. Shall we just call off the whole thing? Well, unfortunately, I have no say in the matter. I am only an instrument, a messenger. And the message I have to bring you is that you are dead. But I can't die. I keep trying to tell you... I'm 56 years old. I have millions. I'm going to be married to a wonderful and exciting woman named Bunny Huggins, and it isn't fair that I can't be left alive to enjoy her. Now, look, I'll, gi I'll give anything, whatever you ask. Now, come, Mr. Brokaw. Don't you think that I've been offered every kind of bribe through the years? But, but, but here, here, look, look. Here's a picture of Bunny. Now, could, uh, could you take any man away from that? <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> As she is attractive, uh, there is no doubt. Oh, you, you see uh, why I have to stay alive? No, no, not at all. Well, it's it's hopeless. I I have to die. Well, there is one possibility. I'll take it. What? As I said, I am world weary. I'm tired to exhaustion. Uh -huh. And um, now this bunny is a most extraordinary looking woman. Yeah. Now, I might be persuaded to take a brief hiatus. Yeah, well, how long? How long? Well, that somewhat depends on Bunny and uh, what develops. What do you mean, Bunny? Mr. Brokaw, if I should make any arrangement with you to hold off your demise, well, naturally, there would have to be some transference of personality. Whoa. What, 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 what does that mean? Well, it's not very difficult. You see, I would take your place... 
And you would take mine. For how long? Well, I can't answer that. Well, for as long as it suits. Well, no, wait, well, wait a minute. You, you take my place. I can imagine, but uh, I take your place. Why? What? Yes, you would become a messenger like me. Oh, it's quite a busy job. I'd go around telling people they're dead. Oh, somebody has to. But, uh, well, uh, well. How would I know which ones to go to? No problem at all. You'll be told. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the more I think of it, a vacation from my appointed rounds could be very uh, invigorating. All right, Mr. Brokaw, you brought it up. Would you like to make the swap? <laughs> This is a curious and rather new situation, isn't it? The devil tempts, the devil makes a bargain for the human soul. But the devil never makes an open trade, does he? Then, of course, this isn't the devil. It's death. Isn't he as sure as taxes? Or is there some escape? I shall return shortly with Act Two. We return to our strange confrontation. In the master bedroom of the huge, gloomy old Brokaw mansion, two men face each other. Men? The one in the bed, Simon Brokaw, is certainly mortal, since he is dying. The one who sits facing him, Mr. Morris, claims to be death. He has just offered Simon one way out from the inevitable. To avoid dying... He can exchange places with that grim, gray specter who has been sent to claim his life. I'm waiting for your answer, Simon Brokaw. Uh, what proof do I have? Proof? That you're really dead. Well, I'm here, am I not? How could I have forced my way into the house? Uh, I'll need more than that. Oh, dear. Dear me. <laughs> Hold out your hand. Why? So I can touch it. You asked for proof. Very well. I remember... This is only the first brush of death. Ah! Oh! Oh! A horrible, cold, clammy blankness. <laughs> You're convinced now? Supposing I am, I... What is it like to be dead? Well, I'm the last person to ask that. I work only this side. Pass the message. Deliver the goods. And then? Then? I don't know. You see... You see, I really don't want to know. I'm satisfied enough with my own job, though it tends to be a little lonely and repetitive. It's why the idea of a vacation appeals to me. Maybe I... I wouldn't like your job. Maybe. It's a chance you take. But then the arrangement can't be permanent. Why not? Why not? Because... Well, because eventually it must come to an end. Hmm. On the other hand, must it? What, what do you mean? It's an interesting speculation. If I've taken over your life and delegated my responsibilities to you, why should we not, in fact, both be immortal? Immortal? Yes, that's your wish. And mine is to have a little more fun, which I certainly might have by living your life. <laughs> yes, the more I think of it... It's a very good exchange. But uh, what would I take with me from my life? Nothing but yourself. All the rest is mine. Now, are you ready to make the swap? What uh, other choice have I? To die. Yeah. All right. How, uh, how do we go about this? Well, we... We just exchanged places. You mean I get out of bed and give you my clothes? Oh, I think it can be simpler than that. If you're ready. <sighs> All right, I'm ready. Now, let's make it as simple as possible. Just take a deep breath. Yeah. Oh, and uh, close your eyes. <laughs> that should do it, I think. You can open your eyes. You feel any different? Of course I feel different. I'm sitting in the chair now while you're in the bed. Naturally. 
We've exchanged places. That was the idea, wasn't it? Yes, but... It, but I... I'm not ready. I don't know what to do. I told you. You don't have to. You will be told. Yes, but I can't... You... You hear something? Yes. I can't stay. I'm being called. I... I'm needed somewhere else. <laughs> oh, that's the way it goes. I began to find it deadly tiresome. He's gone. Oh, poor fellow. He's going to be very busy from now on, while I... Ah, oh, satin sheets... Down pillows. Oh, it's very luxurious. No wonder Miss Bunny finds herself attracted. Uh, Bunny, where is that picture? Ah, if the presence lives up to the picture. Now, let's see. He must have her phone number in a book somewhere. Ah, uh, what was the name? Ah, yes, Huggins. Oh, what promise in that name. Ah, here we are. Bunny Huggins. Simon, what are you doing downstairs? Uh, you must be Nita. Of course, uh, Uncle, are you all right? Oh, never better, Nita, dear. Where's your, uh, uh, the young doctor? Perry? Well, you know, he's a little edgy about coming around here. Because of me? Well, yes and no. Well, what's he worried about? I'll cut you out of my will. He couldn't care less. If he had his way... He'd have me cut out of here. Can't say as I blame him. It's a gloomy old dump. Why don't you take his advice and fly the musty coop? What? Why don't you marry him and be done with it? But I thought... I... Well, I feel a kind of responsibility for you. Why? Well, after all, I am a nurse. One thing I don't need anymore. So feel free. But I just can't walk out like that. All right. Let's have a wedding here. Would you like me to give you away? Give me... Oh, I can't think of anything I'd like better, if you really mean it. Of course I do. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll, I'll get it. That must be my secretary, Miss Huggins. This is a moment I'm really looking forward to. He's agreed to the wedding and wants to give you away? Yes, Perry, darling. I can't tell you what he's... I mean, he's a different man. There are remissions in this kind of disease, aren't there? Oh, not from what I learned from Dr. Manning. Well, Manning's kind of old-fashioned. I'd swear that Uncle has to be in some kind of remission. I mean, he's in marvelous shape. Isn't that great? <laughs> if we can get married at us, so set the date. Let's gather you, Rosebuds, while we may. It, uh, it is what you want, isn't it? You're what I want. <laughs> Simon, sweetie, why couldn't we make it a double wedding? Because I'm not quite sure that I want to get married. But I thought that was all wrapped up and delivered some time ago. Oh, I swear to heaven, sugar, I just don't know you anymore. You're like another man. <laughs> you know, I feel like another man. I reckon that's just great, isn't it? I don't plan on dying anymore, Bunny. Well, I should hope not. You are not going to be a quick widow ready to wallow in the lap of luxury. Who said I wanted to be a widow? Well, it's part of the game, isn't it? I'm not interested in games, Simon. Even the ones of chance? You still could win the jackpot. If I decided to go. You would walk out on me just like that? Oh, I swear, Simon, honey, I don't know how to talk to you anymore. You're... you're like a stranger. Well, I have to admit that I have changed. Well, if that's the way you feel and you want to get rid of poor little Bunny, I can bow out. Mm-hmm. If you want. It's going to cost you. There's the settlement. Hmm? What settlement? <gasps> Why, Simon Broker, how can you talk like that? How can you expect to use up the best years of my life and think you can walk away free? Now, whoever said I wanted to walk away free? As a matter of fact, I was looking forward to some of the best years of my life with you. Uh, but I mean, with you and on my terms. Well, that, 
might not satisfy me all the way. So, see my lawyer. Or let me see him first. And after that... Well, after that, we can talk again. Uh, naturally, I had the new will drawn up, Simon. And this is it? Well, to the best of my belief, is substantially what you indicated to me at our last meeting. Uh, basically, except for a very token amounts, it leaves my entire fortune to Miss Bunny Huggins. According to your wish. A wish with which I sense you are not in agreement. Well, it's an old argument. I have no wish to reopen it. I'll call in a couple of my people to witness your signature. Of what? A new will. Oh, oh, yes, that. Well, we won't have any need of this anymore. The old one will do well enough since I don't plan to die. Not for a long time yet. I'm sorry that you had all this work for nothing. Oh, well, I'm not... I never saw any labor go more cheerfully down the drain. I'd even break my lawyer's old moss back and say, I don't know what the devil has gotten into you, Simon Broker. But whatever it is, I'm for it all the way. Oh, good evening, Mr. Morris. It's you again. Yes, Mrs. Marples, uh... May I come in? If you feel you must. But it won't do any good. Mr. Brokar isn't here. He's still in Las Vegas? Why, no. He left there a week or so ago on a trip around the world. Around the world? Is, uh, is, uh, Miss Huggins with him, do you know? His secretary? Yes. Why, I, I believe so. I, uh... I thought I heard something about a wedding. Oh, heavens, no. Uh, that was Mr. Brokaw's niece. Oh, such a lovely ceremony. And he gave the bride away himself. Nita. Little Nita. Uh, Miss Nita. Uh, Mrs. Lawrence, uh, it would be now, is here at the moment. Uh, uh, if you would like to see her. Oh, uh, no, no. She wouldn't know me from... She, she, she wouldn't know me. Uh, tell Mr. Brokaw I'll look in again. As soon as he's back. Good evening. Can I help you? Oh, good evening, uh, Mrs. Lawrence. You know me. Well, I love you. My name is uh, Morris. I'm uh, an acquaintance of your Uncle Simon. May I see him? I'm afraid he's not here. Oh. Why, well, I, I thought he was due back from his trip. Oh, yes. We're expecting him as it happens. Well, then I wonder if I could just come in and wait. Well, you, uh, tonight it might be a little inconvenient. Uh, it's rather pressing, and I seldom have time uh, don't to... Don't bother about the bags, Bunny. The man will get them. Well, I just need my cosmetic bag. You don't need that or anything else. Now, let's get in and tell everybody the good news. Hello. What are you doing here? I have to see you, Mr. Brokaw. It's rather urgent. Well, <laughs> well, uh, tonight is scarcely the best time. I have a busy schedule. It's my only time. I'm desperate. All right. Come in. Let's all get inside where it's warm. You picked an awkward time. Well, I've been trying to see you ever since we made our ill-advised bargain. Ill-advised? At least from my side. So, what is it you want? I want to call it off. I want to go back being myself, er, being you. I wouldn't blame you for a moment, dear boy. I find it just as delightful as perhaps you remember. Uh, too delightful for me to think of giving up. You see, I am perfectly satisfied as things are. And I wouldn't change them back again for the world. <laughs> This is an interesting twist. Death calls for someone and is refused out of hand. Of course, he did relinquish his peculiar power over this one individual when they struck a bargain. Or did he? Come to think of it, there are so many ramifications from that special agreement which we have never probed or looked into. That will be for when I return shortly with Act Three. 
here we are with another confrontation. The same principles, but a vastly different set of circumstances. A man comes to death to beg for his questionable gift and is refused by death, who has found that the joys of worldly living are infinitely preferable to the cold, lonely world he used to occupy, while apparently Simon Brokar, who eagerly exchanged his world for death's barren one in order to escape dying, is bitterly regretting his bargain. You've got to call it off. Got to? Why? Because I can't stand this ghoulish job you foisted on me. I want to be back in my own body again, to be myself. If you should become Simon Brokaw again, my first commission as death would be to claim you, as I was sent to do in the first place. You would have to die immediately. Well, I'll take my chances on that. Hmm? What chances? Well, you look robust enough to me. You're healthy as a pig and eat and drink like one. You throw my money around like water. You've stolen my mistress and enjoy her. You charter planes to fly like an Arabian oil seek. Gamble as though you were King Farouk. Enjoy wine, song, and my woman to a fault. You certainly seem remarkably healthy to me. My dear Mr. Morris. Don't call me that. It's your present name. Oh, very well. Death, if you prefer. I don't prefer. I'm Simon Brokaw. Were, my dear man, were. I am now Simon Brokaw. And after such a long contact with the dead and dying, I haven't the slightest intention of giving up my contact with the living. First, I have never been so happy and satisfied in my life. Second, while I occupy the body of Simon Brokaw, it functions at peak performance. To let you reoccupy it would be a total waste since life would be snuffed out in that moment. And last, I don't want to return to being the messenger of death ever. I can't blame you for that. There isn't a moment's peace. It does keep you hopping. There's no enjoyment in it. My friend, you chose to be where you are. You live with it. Supposing I just Plane up and quit. <laughs> you can't do that. How do you know? Did you ever try it? Hmm? Well, no, but... Uh, ah, there you see. You hear that? What am I going to do? Ask not for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. I'm sorry you had to dash away, Mr. Morris. So, here we are. A little cognac all around to celebrate the first uh, family dinner since Bunny and I returned. Oh, thank you, Uncle Simon. Mr. Brokaw? It's sweetheart. A little toast to our future together, whatever it may be. Cheers. Oh, yes, cheers. I got you. Like it. <laughs> Perry? Perry, why are you looking at me so quizzically? Oh, was I? I'm, I'm sorry. Well, don't be. You have every right. I would just like to know what you what you were thinking. Perry, dear, I... No, no, Wait. Nita. I really want to hear. Well, all right, sir. I, uh... I was thinking to myself how incredible it is what's happened to you in the last weeks. I mean, you're, you're a different man. Of course I'm a different man. Why shouldn't I be? I walked away from death. Out of the shadows. And for the first time in my life, I've learned how to enjoy myself. I've learned to give instead of eternally taking. Oh, that's my kind, generous, sweet darling. But there are limits, you know. Yes, well, we can discuss those when we're alone, Bunny. For the moment, let me enjoy my family gathered around me. <gasps> what was that? It's Mrs. Marples. An accident? Come on, Perry. It sounded as though she could have fallen down the stairs. <laughs> What is it, Perry? Oh. I can't tell you. Back, oh. internal injuries, oh. maybe a stroke. Oh. we got to get her to the hospital immediately. Oh. Bunny's phoning for an ambulance. Oh. Well, I'd better get on the phone myself. I should have enough clout oh. to shake out emergency oh. faster. Oh, Mr. Brokaw, I, I have to say something. She wants to try to tell you something, oh. Uncle. Very well. Uh, Mrs. Marples, what are you trying to say? Uh, the man, the, the, the thing, he was here. What man? What thing? He said 
the bell tolled for him to come for me. But to tell you he would come no, no more. Is, is she dead? No, I think she's just lapsed into a coma. Oh, Perry. Yeah, what is it, Nina? Is the ambulance coming? Yeah, it's on the way. Well, you'd better have a look at her. What? She dead? I don't know. There's no pulse, no heartbeat, but she's still breathing. It's like she was... I don't know how to say it. It's... Like she had died, but death hadn't come to claim her. Right, Simon Brokaw. Whatever you want to call yourself, where are you? Come on, man, you can't do it. You can't stop the process. Death is a fact of life. You can't stop people from dying. Is that what you're up to? Is that what you're trying? Yes, who is it? Wait a minute. Why don't you come in, Mas... Ma ma oh, 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 Bunny, uh, what do you want? Well, I... I thought I heard you talking to someone. Oh, I was talking, uh, and this has a very special truth. I was... Well, you see, I was... I was trying to talk to myself. Simon, are you all right? Mm, I wish I could answer that sensibly. Why? Well, well, you were so funny after they took that poor old Mrs. Marples away. I know you must have been very fond of her, but... Well, she was an old, old lady, and even if it was an accident, she had to die sometime. <laughs> Only she didn't. Didn't what? She didn't die. Won't die. Can't die. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. It was Macbeth who said he heard a voice say, Macbeth does murder sleep. Ma well, who's Macbeth? He's a character in a Shakespeare play. Well, what's he got to do with us? With me, Bunny, with me. You see, I just... May have... <laughs> I may have murdered death. What do you think, Perry? What can I think? I'm only a month out of internship. Every big shot doctor in the hospital has done his own work up on Mrs. Marples, and no one can explain it. Look, this isn't like you could pull any plugs. Yeah, I know, Nita. We're not sustaining life in that old lady. I mean, medical science isn't... But what life is there? No heartbeat, no circulation. The encephalograms are flat. No sign there's any brain Honey, activity. you don't have to lay it out. By every clinical test, Mrs. Marples is dead. Except one. She's still breathing. She's, I tell you, it's weird. And she's only part of it. What do you mean, Perry? Look... Look, honey, how many of our terminal cases would we have expected to lose in the last three days while Mrs. Marple has been here? I mean, in the ordinary course of events. I don't know. Five or ten, maybe. In a hospital this size? More like 15. And how many have we lost? None. I can think of six of them in my wing alone that are just like her. And, and we're not alone. I mean, I, I, I've been checking with other hospitals and the police, and even the papers have been making cracks about it. Do you know there hasn't been one obituary notice in these last few days? No homicides, no people died in traffic accidents, nobody drowned or strangled or, or, or slipped in the bathtub or fell off a building or burned up or... I tell you, Nita, it's like... I, I'm afraid to say it. Say what, Perry? Come on, say it. It's like maybe nobody's going to die anymore. Oh, Mr. Rensselaer, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, come in, I, come in. Hi, Miss Huggins, what is it? Well, it's Simon. I, I mean, Mr. Broker, he, he's been like a wild man this evening. Oh, what did he say to you on the phone? Uh, just that he wanted to see me. Well, you don't think he's going to change his will again. Well, I'm sure I haven't any idea. Where is he? Uh, upstairs in his bedroom. Then if you'll excuse oh, me. Oh, Mr. Rensselaer. Yeah? I, I told you he was out of his mind. I warn you, he has a gun. Well, he always has had. I don't think he'll want to use it on me. There isn't any more to say. 
I just wanted you to see that I am rational and in possession of all my senses. Well, we've made tape, as you suggested, which will attest to that better than any words I could use in testimony. So, the will stands up. I can see no reason why not. No matter what happens subsequently? I promise you that I will see to it personally. That your last wishes are carried out. But I hope not for a long while yet. That's as it may be. Bunny deserves some consideration, but not all of it. Never all of it. Or most of it. I want Nita and Perry to have that. Yeah, as you have indicated, they'll have it. Good. And, uh, now I'd like to be alone. Well, are you sure? That... I'm as sure as I am that the world deserves to be a good place to live in. Good night, Rensselaer. Good night, Simon. <sighs> Which it never can be, unless death has a place in it again. My name was death. I relinquished it for trivial reasons. All over the world, a frightening horde of those who should have passed over are waiting for this moment. I took this body that was Simon Brokaw's, and I was weak enough not to relinquish it. I want to give it back. Return, Simon Brokaw, who has broken the faith. Return! For if you think you have still the bell that tolls, for you, I will make it ring with the sound of this gun. Where are you? <sighs> then wherever you have gone, I consign our immortal souls to oblivion or whatever judgment shall be rendered there and your mortal flesh by this act to the resumption of what man may turn his face against, but which he cannot live without. It was a night long to be remembered. There were a record number of deaths, a strange epidemic that had no discernible cause, but which seemed to restore a balance in nature. Among the obituaries was one for Simon Brokar. In none of them was there any mention of a Mr. Morris, which is not too surprising, of course, since he himself was the one who pointed out that his alias was merely a convenience, that his real name was Death. I'll be back shortly. Come away, come away, death. Let me in sad cypress be laid. But if you ponder it a while, is it so sad? So many deaths are merciful. So many prayed for. So many long delayed. And all of them at the last, not to be questioned, but accepted. For who can cancel, change, escape that one last appointment. Our cast included Norman Rose, William Griffiths, Marion Seldes, Joan Shea, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule, and Greyhound Package Express. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please 